All right, so Chris Tyson, Mr. Beast's co-worker and friend, has responded to some of the backlash that he's been getting from some Christians after revealing that he's divorcing his wife and coming out as trans. During an exchange with another Twitter user, he made a series of criticisms of Christianity, including saying that the Bible is just a make-believe book. But that's not all that he had to say about Christianity. So let's go ahead and talk about what else he said, and then I'll give my thoughts on his criticisms. Now, if you need to catch up on all that's been going on, you can go ahead and watch my last video, which I'll link down below. But after Chris came out of trance, he posted a picture of him and his son on his second Twitter account with a caption saying, if I didn't have this little nugget, I'd never have gotten this far. He's taught me so much about myself in such a short time. I can't wait to learn through life together. And someone responded to Chris's tweet by calling him a child groomer. Now, of course, Chris took offense to this comment, and so he responded by saying, you are actually sick, and the Bible talks about false prophets and how they have a special place in hell. Enjoy yours if you don't change. Now, I was a little confused when I read the comment because I didn't understand why he was calling the commentator a false prophet. My assumption is that Chris is saying that the commentator is spreading false information about him and that the commentator is condemned by the Bible that they profess to believe in. And this is when a different Twitter user jumps in and he says, bro, man, guy, I don't know if this very, very loose understanding of the Bible is particularly convincing. To which Chris responds with, I've read it from front to back twice, went to a Christian private school with the Bible class as part of the curriculum, and sat through every Sunday and Wednesday service that was held. I can interpret the Bible how I see fit, just like Christians do. All right, so this response was obviously a way to accuse Christians of picking and choosing what scriptures they want to follow and interpreting the Bible according to their own personal preferences. Chris also implied that he knows the Bible well. And before we get into his main criticisms of Christianity and my thoughts on all of this, we have to take a quick second to thank the sponsors for today's video. If you're a single Christian and you're starting to feel defeated and finding the right spouse, I honestly would recommend Higher Bond even if they weren't the sponsors of this video. The reason why is because Higher Bond is a unique data nap for Christians that's really carefully crafted to help you find the right spouse. For example, they match you on things that other Christian dating apps simply don't, such as your denomination, your views on swearing, how often you read your Bible, and so on. They also don't allow you to just spam a bunch of inboxes and play a numbers game. They limit you to starting one conversation a day because they believe that it's about quality over quantity. Of course, you can respond to multiple messages, but when it comes to starting them, they want you to take your decision seriously so that way you could find the right person for you. Again, I highly recommend it. If you're looking for a Christian spouse, go ahead and click down below and get your first three months for free. Now, back to the video. All right, so after the other Twitter user responded to Chris by questioning his interpretation of the Bible, instead of saying, my life, my choice, Chris responded rhetorically by saying, my life, my make-believe book to derive morals and lessons from. Now, real quick from reading Chris's tweet so far, it seems likely to me that Chris has been hurt by Christians in the past, and this person who called him a child groomer while identifying as a Christian probably didn't help. I'm sure that this probably dictated Chris's response to some degree, but nonetheless, Chris's response still has a few problems. Problems. To start, if Chris's intention was to mock Christians for deriving their morals and lessons from what he calls a make-believe book, then he doesn't seem to realize that he also gets some of his morality from that make-believe book. I mean, think about it. In a tweet during the previous presidential election, Chris wrote, This election has really made me think about why I love the internet so much. All of us kids who were suppressed and shamed for being who we are, or told our opinions didn't matter, are finally standing up and letting our voices be heard. But what's interesting about this is that his very ability to voice his opinions against those in power without being punished or executed is possible because he lives in a country that was built on the influence of Christian morality. Morality that he might not even be aware that he agrees with, at least with respect to this point. The thing is, before Christianity came about, and also in most of all of the other countries in the world where Christianity's ethics haven't penetrated, we don't see this same privilege available to people. Do you see people in Saudi Arabia or North North Korea or China openly speaking against the government or things that they don't agree with, whenever we do, those people tend to go missing pretty quickly. So the fact that Chris can openly speak ill against Christianity and the Bible is a luxury that was afforded to him by Christian ethics, which is why you can't do the same by talking against Muhammad or the Quran in Saudi Arabia. This is because freedom is a consistent theme all throughout the Bible, and every human being is said to be made in the image of God. And to take it further, while the Bible might not endorse Chris's decision to come out 
out and decide to be a woman or gender non-conforming, he's still able to do so without the fear of execution due to the same ethical influence America adopted from Christianity. Now, I could go on and on on this point, but I think that Chris would have to agree that he shares at least some of his ethics from what he considers to be a make-believe book, which leads to my next point. Now, Chris's comment makes it sound as if the Bible is just a collection of invented and made up stories, and I could see how someone could think that at first glance. I really can. But as Chris knows, if he's read the entire Bible, he knows that we consistently see the Bible emphasizing faith based on facts and evidence and what people do know rather than what they don't know. The New Testament authors wrote that not only were the Gospels not invented, but if Christ didn't really resurrect from the dead, then their preaching is useless and so is their faith. This is why they're consistently mentioning names and people and the places in this very time which the events were said to occur. Now, I wouldn't expect anyone to just take their word for it without any evidence, and thankfully, we don't have to. I don't have the time to get into all of the evidence here, but Chris believing that the Bible is a collection of make-believe stories is a claim that a lot of people have made in the past. But then, archaeology. As time goes on, we've come to see that every single year that goes by, we find more and more evidence in support of the people, places, and events in the Bible. For example, people used to say that the Hittites in the Bible didn't exist, but in the 19th and 20th centuries, archaeologists discovered numerous Hittite artifacts and documents. People used to say that King David didn't exist, but in 1993, archaeologists digging in Israel discovered a broken stone from the 9th century BC with an Aramaic inscription referring to the House of David, given widely acknowledged reference to David and his dynasty. And when it comes to the New Testament, people would say that Pontius Pilate was just an invention of the Bible. But in 1961, they found a stone with his name on it, and also another inscription with Pilate's name on an ancient ring that was uncovered in 2018. And lastly, and most importantly, when it comes to the existence of Jesus, even Bart Ehrman, an agnostic and atheist biblical critic, says that Jesus being crucified is one of, if not the most established facts in all of the ancient world. And if Jesus was crucified, then he obviously existed. This is why Ehrman says that he doesn't know of a single accredited specialist teaching at a university that believes that Jesus never lived. I know in the, in the crowds you all run around with, it's commonly thought that Jesus did not exist. Let me tell you, once you get outside of your conclave, there's nobody who, I mean, this is not even an issue for scholars of antiquity. A hundred years ago, the sentiment was radically different. So if Chris was making the claim back then, that would have made sense. But today, it just doesn't hold water. There's literally hundreds of claims about people and places and events in the Bible that people used to say were made out of whole cloth. But those claims have been and continue to be debunked by the evidence. And by the way, I put some resources down below if you're interested in learning more. Now, to be fair to Chris, I will say that as humans, we tend to mock things that we don't understand. And people who don't understand Chris's decision and what Chris is going through are likely to mock him in their confusion. But I would also say the same thing to Chris when it comes to the Bible. Even if he has really read it twice, and even though I can sympathize with Chris being hurt by Christians in the past and also more recently, it seems to me that he's mocking it, not because he understands it so well, but because he doesn't. But no matter what you think of Chris and his views on the Bible, I think it's important that we pray for him him, his family, and the rest of the Mr. Beast crew. Which reminds me, if you're curious what Mr. Beast thinks about religion and you want to hear my thoughts on that, then go ahead and check out this video and I'll see you over there. But the next time someone says that the Bible is just a make-believe book full of unnecessary morality, what are you going to say? What do you mean?